Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb, come fly with AOPA. This week, tackling accelerated stalls, the latest news in the Vans Aircraft Bankruptcy Reorganization, and flying the new Cirrus Aircraft SR Series G7. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Well, stalls are something that can make a lot of pilots nervous. I was one of those for many, many years. Every time I was asked to do a stall, I would literally gulp. Well, AOPA content producer Ian Twombly walks us through accelerated stalls, and I tell you, he is so cool, calm, and collected that he just might help you get over your stall jitters. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this the first time by yourself, but it's a good exercise with an instructor. And you'll see that we approach the stall really quickly. You feel a hard buffet and then a break. And all you need to do to recover is let go of back pressure and you're flying again. So there's 60, I'm gonna add just a little bit of power. And then pull. So you can hear the horn is even yelling at you. It screams more than it normally would. You get a little buffet, the nose comes up, and it breaks down straight ahead. And that's because we're coordinated. So this time I'm going to do something a little more real world, which is a turning stall, a turning accelerated stall. Um, unfortunately, this is not the best airplane to demonstrate this in because it has VGs, so that keeps flying a lot longer than most 172s would. But we're going to do it anyway. So again, we're going to bring the power this time to maybe to about 1800. The value is really not that important. Right now I'm at 75, mostly level. And I'm just going to roll into a steep turn. Again, kind of clearing the area. I'm going to keep it coordinated, just like before. And then I'm just going to kind of tighten up the turn by pulling. You can hear the stall warning horn already. And there it goes. And because we were coordinated, it fell nicely straight ahead, and I'm able to just roll out as soon as I let go of the, of the bank. You can watch the full video on our YouTube channel, and I tell you, you're going to want to watch that entire flight with Ian. Well, the AOPA Air Safety Institute has released a new real pilot story. It's called Trouble Over Paradise. Cessna Caravan pilot Ken Allen became incapacitated during flight, and a passenger helped recover the aircraft from a nosedive that it had entered called ATC for help, and then a controller actually helped walk the passenger through to a safe landing. We took off out of Marsh somewhere around 11 o'clock, climbed up to 12,000 feet, nice beautiful day, everything was going well, and then all of a sudden I felt this really sharp pain in the right side of my head. And when that happened it just felt something I've never felt before. So I told Russ and Darren, I said, um, guys, I don't feel good. And they said, what does that mean? I said, I don't know, but my head is killing me. And um, the next thing I know, I remember Darren and Russ tapping me on the shoulder saying, stay with us, stay with us, Ken. And then that was it. You can watch the full real pilot story on the Air Safety Institute's YouTube channel. We'll drop a link in the description below. Vans Aircraft customers have until January 30th. Now that's an additional two weeks beyond the initial proposal uh, to review and either accept or decline the company's new proposal. Remember, that includes a roughly 30% increase in aircraft kits. And now it's going to be the collective decision among customers of whether to accept or reject the offer. And that's going to have a major uh, influence. It's going to be a key factor in the company's fate. The company has developed a reorganization plan that hinges on two significant unknown factors. So the first is determining what the company owes and to whom. And this really can be estimated until customers either accept or reject the new pricing proposal. 
The second unknown is future revenue. And that depends on the impact of the price increased on existing and future demand, as well as the company's ability to overcome the negative impact that the laser cut parts has had on its business and reputation. Customers had requested replacements of laser cut parts that a vendor for Vans had supplied, and Vans worked with its own equipment to produce the replacement parts. Now, the laser cut parts have been determined to be safe. You can read more on our website. We'll drop a link in the description below. Last week, we brought you up to speed on the battle brewing at Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport in Colorado. That's where residents have moved in close to the airport. They signed aviation easement agreements acknowledging aircraft noise, vibration, etc. Well, they're seeking uh, legal means to limit operations at the airport. And this is even though the airport for decades had warned against incompatible land use and against residential housing going that close to the airport. Well, now 406 homeowners in the Rock Creek neighborhood of Superior, Colorado, have filed a lawsuit against the airport and its sponsor, that's Jefferson County. Now they're claiming that they're owed damages due to increased exposure to leaded fuel, decreased home values, and airport operations that violate aviation easement agreements. Now they live in an area where a judge previously vacated some of the aviation easements. But this lawsuit could affect much more than Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport. The homeowners, the airport, no one other than the FAA has the right to control who flies into and out of an airport or their flight pass or their aircraft emissions. Now, the EPA does have exclusive jurisdiction to regulate aircraft emissions, but in consultation with the FAA, Still, the lawsuit could send a message to people across the country who live near airports and they're unhappy with the airport to file lawsuits to try to limit operations or close the airport. And AOPA is going to continue working this issue, not only to protect Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport, but airports across our nation. The FAA is still working on regulations for unmanned aircraft to fly beyond visual line of sight. And while they're doing that, AOPA is working with the industry to ensure that these new rules allow for safe integration into our airspace system, but that they won't have a negative impact on general aviation. So AOPA won't stand for any equipage mandates or loss of right-of-way privileges for general aviation. And those are actually two concepts that have been suggested by some in the unmanned aircraft community. So you can read more about this on our website. We'll drop a link in the description below. All right, let's take a break away from all the threats that AOPA is, is fighting off for general aviation and turn to something fun. So the AOPA fly-in at the Buckeye Air Fair is coming up. It's set for February 16th through 18th. It'll be in Buckeye, Arizona. So we're going to offer seminars, a large indoor exhibit hall with the latest new technology, gear, and services. We'll have an awesome aircraft, and obviously you can catch the air show on Saturday and Sunday. We have the perfect viewing spot for you. That is our members-only AOPA Flightline Chalet. So bring your whole family. There's something there for all ages at the airfare. And I tell you, I talked to the mayor of Buckeye last year, and he said that February is actually the best weather time to visit Arizona. So mark it on your calendar, make plans to attend. You can get all the information on our website. We'll drop a link to that in the description below. And if you're looking for other events to attend, um, why don't you check out our airport directory online? We have a tab that says find events. And from there, you'll be able to filter by the type of event that you're interested in. Finally, this week, Cirrus Aircraft Executive Director of the SR product line, Ivy McIver, takes us flying in the new SR22 G7 and check out this flight deck. Today, I'm super excited to introduce you to the Cirrus Aircraft SR Series G7. So for the G7, not too much has changed in terms of features on the outside, but we do have brand new carbon and platinum paint schemes and a wide array of colors to personalize your airplane. The model we're gonna fly today is an SR22T. It is equipped with all the fun features, four blade prop, Sears IQ, and of course the brand new flight deck that we are introducing for the G7. So let's go flying. 
There's a taxi we're grabbing. It's like a flight plan for your, the airport, and it'll give you a taxi we're grabbing. And it just draws it on the airport. When we hopped in the airplane and we configured everything uh, to start up, we started it without a key. Uh, the outer knob works just like uh, the key does with the Max. You just rotate the knob to both and then push the button and the engine starts right up. Moving down to the bolster switch panel, uh, we want to keep the flight deck and the controls as simple as possible, as approachable as possible. So we've done that with the bolster pan switch panel. So we've removed the avionics switch because you're always going to need the avionics, so why bother having a switch? We've also removed the nav switch, so if I want to take a look at the checklist, I can pop that up into um, the right-hand side of the PFD and then navigate right through those checklists um, with the checklist scroll wheels. Moving down into the controller section, we've got two very easy-to-use touchscreen controllers here. We've got Aviate, Navigate, Communicate, right? But we're going to Aviate and Navigate using this GTC and we're going to communicate with this GTC. Um, so here I've got very familiar, easy-to-recognize icons that I can just kind of fly around. Everything is uh, very easily accessible with a really shallow menu structure. And I can get my cursor and then I can kind of cursor around the map if I want to. So I can kind of come up here. This is Elizabethtown Municipal Airport. I can get that info right on my GTC. So it makes it really, really easy to just navigate your map. We've got huge 14 inch screens up here on the MFD and the PFD. So now if I want to actually kind of check up on the health of my airplane, I'll go ahead and split the screen, highlight this screen on the right, and then I can look at all of the synoptic pages. So there's my kind of status of my airplane right now. I've got about 88 hours on the airplane, should have about 90 hours by the time we land. This is going to where I find uh, the outside temperature. So it's ISO minus four, very handy information to know. I can also uh, see other things like make sure my baggage door is closed, make sure my cabin door is closed. I can see my oil temper here, know that my parking brake is off. So that kind of gives me a health status of the airplane. I've also got a system status page, so that's gonna give me all of my engine information. I can see that we're automatically pulling from the right tank. And this is probably a great time to mention the fact that we are introducing automatic fuel selection with the G7. So. On my engine strip here on the MFD, we've got our fuel quantities left and right, and I've got a little box around my right tank. That means I'm pulling off my right tank, and my um, engine and fuel synoptic page shows the fuel valve is actually pulling from the right tank. And I'm auto. So that means every five gallons, the system is automatically going to switch up or move from switch to the right tank to switch to the left tank. I can switch that into manual mode by just lifting up this cover. So when I lift the cover up, there's my fuel selector. I can switch it from right to left. I'm now in manual mode. So it gives me an alert here that I'm in manual mode, turning from the right. I manually move that over. You'll see the fuel valve moved and now it's pulling from the left side. This is also where I would access my EVS camera. So this is a really high resolution infrared camera that's giving me the view. Uh, the camera's located underneath the left wing. Um, and that's uh, basically giving me an infrared view of what we're looking at out there. And then, of course, we've got our communication GTC. So the kind of nice thing is I have a, a bit of a um, kind of all-in control here. Um, so when I go to my audio and radios, I've got all of the different options here. I can turn up the volume on the nav, the comm, the mic. And then when I go to my co-pilot, I can either sync everyone to the pilot, so I only have to change it in one place, or if I'm trying to adjust the volume a little bit differently for the co-pilot, I can go in and do that completely independently. Another one of the things that we redesigned for the G7 was the yoke. So we took a lot of cues from the vision jet and made it a much more jet-like uh, feel. We've moved the buttons around to be a little bit easier to reach. Uh, and it's just a, a nice interface to the flight controls. In addition to the redesign, we've also built some safety features in here. So um, we have included a stick shaker. Um, so if you are um, approaching a stall or a stall is imminent, not only will you get a visual cast message that the stall is impending and you'll get a stall warning in your headset, you'll also get a vibration and tactile feedback through both yokes. So you'll feel that stick shaker uh, right on the onset of an imminent stall.
I gotta say, I love all of those features. So let us know in the comments below if you owned an SR Series G7, where's the first place you would go flying? If I had one, I think I would just pack out my whole family and travel the country for a month. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fly with AOPA. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all our latest videos. This week, we leave you with some more footage from that Cirrus SR22T G7 air-to-air. -air, and that footage comes to us courtesy of our very talented video content producer, Jamal Warner. Now, be sure to send in your favorite flying videos. You just might see them on an upcoming show. And if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Just click on the link at the end of this video to learn more about our trial membership. We'll see you next week.